Welcome to another 4 Minute Friday. This is where I take a few minutes out to answer some of your questions. That's a great question and to be quite honest, yes, we quite often feed heavy during winter. However, when we refer to the term feeding heavy, sometimes that doesn't always mean that we're putting lots of free particles in. Sometimes it means we're just putting a large volume of ground bait in. What thing that we've talked about a lot on this channel is that sometimes ground bait in itself is enough of a, an attractor and it's enough to hold fish in your swim without having to put plenty of free offerings into that ground bait. And as you can expect during winter, when bites can be at a premium, you generally have to cut back on the amount of loose feed that you put in. But sometimes by just putting a bed of ground bait down, that can be enough to draw fish in and hold them, particularly if you're targeting skimmers and bream. So in answer to that question, yes, we do it quite often, but generally we tend to do it in one area of the swim so that that allows us to be positive in one area. However, as you know, in winter, sometimes the best approach is to be quite cautious and feed quite negative so that is an approach that we will, we will adopt elsewhere in the swim. Rod position on rivers can be very very important and there isn't one set answer as to how you should position your rod when you are fishing rivers and part of that reason is because it can often depend on the speed of the flow of the river that you're actually fishing. So. As you can imagine, sometimes when we're fishing slow moving rivers, we might often just have our rod down with our tip just above the water, just like we do when we're fishing still waters. However, on faster flowing rivers, we generally have to get the rod up high, and that is because we're trying to get as much of the line actually off the water so that it's not gonna be affected by the tow. And by that, I basically mean that your line running through the water on a fast flowing river will be picking up some of that flow. The flow will then be trying to move that line and that in turn will be trying to dislodge the feeder off the bottom, which means the feeder will be moving down the swim. And quite often when we're targeting bigger fish like barbel, sometimes chub and bream, you do want a stationary bait. And that's why we position the rod nice and high so they can get the line off the water. But quite often we generally find that the position of the rod is definitely in relation to the flow of the river that you're actually faced with. That's a very big question rolling. It's one that kind of stems into quite a few other questions that I've been getting asked recently about feeding ground bait for silverfish. Now, when we talk about targeting silverfish, that could obviously mean it could mean dace, it could mean roach, little tiny fish, or it could mean three and four pound bream. They all come under the silverfish bracket. So when you're talking about selecting a ground bait for targeting silverfish, firstly, just think about why you are actually using the ground bait in the first place. Are you using the grammar as an attractor? Are you using it as a carrier? Or are you using it as a basis to actually feed a large shoal of fish? And once you've got the answer to that, that should then help you make a better decision about the type of ground bait that you're gonna use for that specific occasion. Now, one common trend with silverfish ground baits is that there will be relatively low feed in that ground bait. And that's because, as you can imagine, if you're targeting small silverfish like roach and perch or little skimmers, they haven't got big stomachs, so you don't want to be giving them too much feed actually within the mix itself. That is because those fish, we want to use the ground bait to bring the fish in. We would like it to hold the fish as well, but we don't want them filling up on the ground bait. We want them to be eating the freebies, i.e. maggots, casters, worms, pinkies, squats. Those are the baits that we can actually put on our hook. And as regards the actual activity, Quite often, if you are targeting roach and perch or even dace, or those smaller, more active fish, then an active ground bait mix can be the way to go because the activity from the ground bait that's gonna be coming up off the bottom, it's gonna be fizzing or breaking off as it actually falls through the water, that can often be the activity that you need to draw those small silver fish in. On the flip side of that, the other category of silver fish that we've talked about, which are larger bream and big skimmers, that is when you will probably be better off using a much more inert mix. The reason for that is because those are bottom feeding fish. And if you've got an active mix and you're targeting those bigger fish, the activity of an active mix could draw in silver fish of a much smaller stamp, i.e. the fish that you're not targeting. So when you're casting out there with a piece of worm on or double maggot or pinkies, 
the small fish could be attacking that bait and that isn't the ideal scenario is it because you want the bigger fish to be picking out those baits so by picking a much more inert dead mix then that could be the better way for being a little bit more selective for targeting those bigger slow moving fish I really hope answering some of those questions for you is going to help you catch a few more fish and if you want to see more of these 4 minute fire videos check out this one just here from a previous episode.